Cigar Box Nation TV. This is the Giddy Guys Show here on Cigar Box Nation TV. I'm Ben Baker. This is Glenn Watt. And we got our guy Nick over here in the corner running the camera and the controls. It's going to be a good time. going to be a good thing here today. So, we've got a good show for you. We're going to be reviewing some tablature and how to play a new piece of tablature that Nick put together this week. We're going to be talking about a musician who recently released a new Cigar Box guitar album and uh, what, some how-to information, all sorts of good stuff. Uh, but for now, it's Giddy Guy Show, Cigar Box Nation TV. It's the Giddy Guy Show, Cigar Box Nation TV. And come to your life from CB Giddy. on deck for you today is going through a new piece of tablature uh, for a famous song uh, written around the time of the Civil War, Battle Hymn of the Republic. So uh, we've got the tablature that's going to appear right up here on screen so you can follow along. Now what you're seeing here, the top line, that top G line there, refers to the high G string on a three string cigar box guitar. The middle line there is the, the D string. And then the low, that bottom one there, what is that? Low G. That's the low G, baby. So we're going to play it pretty simply the first time through. I'm going to follow the pretty much what you're seeing there as closely as I can. Glenn's going to do some strumming of the chords. And then we're going to uh, do a little more complex version and then uh, swing it a little bit there at the end. So if you've got your three-string cigar box guitar at home there, follow along as we're doing this. All right. and much more on CigarBoxGuitar.com. We've got that, a new one that Nick just did and posted for when Johnny comes marching home mm. again. Uh, in a bit of a patriotic role these days, but we're going to keep growing that library of free tablature, free how-to-play resources. We've got chord forms, all sorts of good stuff on there. And i got to ask, if I may, now, are you aware that we do offer tablature on CigarBoxGuitar.com and that much of it is available as free downloadable PDF so that you can have it for yourself on your computer on any device that you have with you while you're playing your cigar box guitar and if you are aware what is the last please tell me I'm interested to know what is the last PDF or the last JPEG whatever what is the last tablet that you downloaded from cigarboxguitar.com and how did it work for you did you find it interesting did you find it exciting and lastly if you have been going to cigarboxguitar.com for tablature, can you tell me in the comments what it is that you'd like to see there as well? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, we've got several different formats of tablature there that we've done over the years, so your feedback on it's really appreciated. Yes. want to give a quick shout out here to some of you that are tuning in yes. today. We want to thank you for taking time to tune in to this broadcast, to watch us up here carrying on about cigar box guitars and homemade instruments. We love them. We know you love them too. And 
and we're going to get into it. So, so Matthew good. Simpson, uh, Charles Dustin are around. I see Shane Spiel out there saying, woo, free tab. Good to see you guys. <laughs> so the, the next thing we're going to talk about here, mm. we're going to feature a, a, a person, a, a guy who's been really doing some amazing things exploring homemade musical instruments and helping to spread the word. Absolutely. Uh, Glenn here is going to talk about Zeke Leonard Absolutely. and the work he's doing. I, just recently, I have stumbled across this man's website, this man's blog, Zeke Leonard. He's a, he operates in the same region as we do here at CB Giddy Crafter Supply. And this man uh, is, a, is a former set designer for a uh, theater company. And something that he said uh, what, that got him into building his own handmade musical instruments is that as a set designer, he was dismayed by the fact that he was building these beautiful things, and when the theater company was done with them, they were throwing it in the trash. And what drew him so much to building handmade musical instruments, which is something I think that you can relate to, is that he's taking things literally out of the trash to make beautiful things. And this is just something I think that speaks to all of us as builders and players that means so much to us in the cigar box guitar community. I last night read every single blog post this man has had and from Salt City Found Objects Instrument Works. Uh, that's his blog. I read every single blog post from 2011 to present and it's a beautiful thing to witness. This man, through every single post, has, uh, it's not a how-to blog, but he's described what uh, each instrument that he's built has brought to him. So he started out with, just like the rest of us, a simple stick in a box, some tuners, and a couple of nuts to serve as, a, as the nut and the bridge, or a couple of bolts to serve as the nut and the bridge. And over the course of time, with each post, he's built canjos, ukuleles, all sorts of instruments. And like I said, the, the, our, like I said it's not a how-to blog, but with each post, he describes what he's made, how it's made him feel, and then posts a video at the bottom, fully transparent, mistakes and all, you name it, the guy is fully on board with building handmade musical instruments. He shares this kind of stuff with everybody freely. I highly recommend that you check it out. He's not just an instrument builder, he's also an artist. He's, uh, he gets, he gets takes, uh, takes in artist and residency programs, and he's uh, turned entire stairwells, activated them, if you will, with instruments by hanging different instruments wow. that he's made specific to that stairwell for, uh, just if you were to walk up or down it, and he's got them tuned that as you go walk by, and they're not just guitars, as you walk by, you can play these instruments, and they all work in concert with one another. And nice. It's a really an amazing thing. Now, to, the, one of the really unique things about his blog is that over the course of time, and I think a lot of us builders can relate to this, is that you can see as his builds improve, he gets more and more into advanced building. And by build number 84, five years after his, 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 his blog, he actually built a steam bent tenor guitar. Uh, and it was, it's amazing. And, 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 and it's been a couple years since, and every instrument that he's built thereafter has been made out of repurposed pianos, if you don't mind throwing that image up, Nick. And this is actually a harp from a thrown away the piano that clearly it's not a guitar but he's using these types of uh, objects to create music to create uh, objects that create sound uh, that otherwise we're going to be discarded and I know that's something that we can all relate to and something that's really beautiful if I can share with you he had actually uh, written and spoken some things on his blog that I wanted to share with you now if I can, ha if I can have that Nick these quotes love to, for you to be able to take this in because I think that we can all relate to these type of things and what we have here is Something that Zeke has been saying is, I always try to use things that other people have deemed unwanted or unusable. A lot of my material comes from flea markets. Some of my material literally comes out of the trash. And again, that's something that we can all relate to. I mean, if, we've been, if we are at the Home Depot store, if we're at the dump, or wherever we are, and we see like a sink strainer or a fork, that could be a good tailpiece cover, or that could be, excuse me, a good tailpiece, or that could be a great sound hole cover. And something else that he shared that I think is worthy of, uh, of us taking in is that if you surround yourself with objects that you are able to mold, that you are able to influence positively, you're taking responsibility for your quality of life. One of the ways I'm doing this is that by helping people make their own instruments so that they can make their own music, shaping the world around them and creating positive change. Now, if that isn't a beautiful message to be shared in our community and that we can all relate to, I don't know what is. It's a great Absolutely. thing to check out. That's, that's the heart of it right there. Absolutely. That's the core of it. And I just wanted to add, we've got one of those piano frames upstairs. Oh, you that's know? right. <laughs> See, so I'm feeling inspired yeah. here today. That's awesome. So uh, thank you to, if uh, I think he's on vacation this week, but... If you see, if you're watching this later, Zeke, thank you Absolutely. for the work you're doing, and it, it's an inspiration, and we're happy to see it. Now, 
those of you tuning in, I've been seeing the comments scroll by here. We've got a little tablet up here so we can see some of your comments and who's tuning in. I saw South Africa out there, Northern Ireland, nice. uh, Warren Graham out there. Uh, thank you for taking your time to watch this show. And if you like it, share it. Uh, leave us a comment to let us know you're out there. And here's a little incentive for that. Just yesterday, I got some promotional copies of a new cigar box guitar book from Brent Robitaille. This is 101 riffs and solos for three string open G cigar box guitar. This is the stuff, when I saw this show up, I was like, yeah, one of these is mine. Because the riffs and, and the, the turnarounds and the little things, the little things that you do, dee 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 bom 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 like what is that bom 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 and how do you do it how do you make your playing sound like that that's what's in here so we're going to be giving away three of these uh, and I don't think they they might I'm not sure if they've been officially released yet or not we're not carrying them yet here at CB Giddy gonna be giving three away to you three of you out there who interact with this video uh, this live broadcast during the live broadcast or afterwards, we're going to cut it off uh, probably tomorrow. Um, but if you comment on it or share it, you'll be in the running to get one of these. And we'll be contacting you after the fact. So let us know you're out there. Let us know what you like. It helps keep us going. We're doing our best to, to inspire you. And it's a symbiotic relationship. Yes, it is. All right. Got any, anything? I think I took your no, uh, audience interaction I'm, points. Left the time. I think Zeke deserves a little uh, des deserves a little credit and a little attention. So again, I hope that you go check them out at Salt City Found Object Instrument Works. Yes, and the the link if if it's not in the comments already, when we go through after the fact, we'll make sure it's in there for you, so you can see yeah. the amazing work he's doing. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, so. The next thing, it's, it's our uh, 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 support corner, we're calling it. You know, here at CB Giddy, we ship things all over the world, uh, hundreds of orders a week, thousands of orders a month. Uh, so we get a lot of emails, we get a lot of support requests, people asking us questions about the stuff we sell, about our kits and parts and all sorts of things. So this past week, we got a question from a guy uh, in Florida. Michael in Florida sent us a message and asks, Dear Getty, will your fully fretted diatonic one string canjo neck fit all cans? In other words, aluminum cans, beer bottles, uh, power drink cans like uh, Red Bull mm. and Monster and all that kind of stuff, oil cans, etc." Thank you for writing that in, Michael. Yes. Um, and the answer is, well, I just so happen to have one back here as an example. This is the neck he's referring to. This is the Kanjo neck that we make here at CB Giddy and sell. It's fretted diatonically, which means like a dulcimer. And then it's got this section down here at the end, which is where the can goes. So this is actually from one of our Kanjo kits. Um, we use the same neck. The can mounts there, the string goes through the bottom up the neck, and you, you play on it. Um, so the short answer is that yes, it can be made to work with a lot of different things. You might have to alter it a little bit. For a, a modern beer can, say, or a soda can, they have a lip here at the top that insets a little bit. It comes up and then it comes in, which means that if a string is coming up and over that, to clear that lip, you're going to be pretty high over the fretboard. So to use a soda can, you actually should sand or cut a notch down to lower this so that the can actually sits a little lower on the neck so that the string height will be correct. <clears throat> now with an oil can, I, I assume Michael was talking about one of the quart oil cans that, you know, about yay high and about that big around. If you try to mount that on top of this stick, it's going to stick up about that much and trying to get back down to pick the string would be difficult. So what we came up with here is a sort of half round notched insert that goes in the can that holds the stick right in the middle of the can. And there are other ways to do it, but the short answer is this is a very versatile neck that can be used. You can stick this on top of a cigar box and put a flying bridge over it. You can run this through a cigar box and make a one string diddly bow. You can drill another tuner hole up here and make a two string. You could probably get crazy and do a three. 
I think Amzi Adams actually down in New Orleans has taken these necks and turned it into a three string neck for a cigar box guitar uh, diddly bow sort of thing. So thank you uh, to Michael for writing that in and we'll be featuring more uh, support requests and questions in future broadcasts. We're going to be trying to do these every week, Fridays at 2. Mm. Uh, Glenn actually going to be on vacation this coming week, or no, the week, week after. after mm -hmm. And he volunteered to come in for the I'm not show. i pass this up. <laughs> come on. <laughs> come on now. All right, so that's the Panjo net. Very versatile. So again, and we keep repeating this, we keep saying it, but thank you for watching. Share this video if you enjoy it or if you think other people may enjoy it. And again, people who interact with the with this broadcast or the video that gets posted afterwards, we're going to be giving away three of the new Cigar Box Guitar How to Play books, chosen randomly from the list of people who comment or share. Those are the two things you got to do. Comment here in the comments. I see Jasser Cepeda out there, hey. Lynn Laverty. Uh, thank you for watching. And three of you are going to be getting one of these books. It's going to be awesome. Yeah, good and stuff. And trust me, we know that your time is valuable. There's yeah. a ton of things that you can be doing online. So that, they, that you're spending these moments with us really means a lot. So thank you very much. Thank you for watching. Absolutely. All right, next, we're going to be talking about a new album, some new music yeah. from a cigar box guitar musician. Eric Denton. Eric was Denton. kind enough to share his album with uh, both Ben and I. A terrific album, by the way. All 100% cigar box guitars all Eric Denton because yeah. he, r he runs the gamut of uh, styles throughout the album um, you know it's, some of it's a gospel some of it's a very Americana feeling and uh, some of it is kind of like uh, has that feel that we're, we all almost expect out of Cigar Boss guitar players when he opens up that album with that hard driving like that boogie that like Ben and I opened up with and it, it's really it's a really it's an ear catcher and you want to keep moving yeah. but uh, since Ben and I play so much of that kind of stuff here on this show or have in the past I thought it might be nice if we shared one of uh, Eric Denton's songs off his new album that I think he released just this past April um, mm. that has a bit more of a, like a, a, a subdued, mellow feel, but beautiful, like that Americana feel that so many of us have come to know and love throughout, throughout our uh, experience here in the uh, Cigar Box Guitar community. So we've got a 30 second or so clip here for you so you can listen to his song, what's the name of it? At the Bottom. At the Bottom. You got it. Take a listen. <laughs> Some say you're at the top, looking down Some say you're far away above the cloud I can't imagine where you'll be When you get around to saving me Oh Lord, I hope you're at Hey! Was that 30 seconds already? <laughs> Corb, it's good to see you. And Matthew, I agree with you. It is a terrific album. Yeah, and very for, good stuff. For other performing artists, just want you to know, Big Chris, I got you. Big Chris <laughs> and the Bare Bones Band. We, uh, we're looking to, to, to share more of the, uh, the, the efforts that you have here. And that we all know amazing artists. We all know Shane Spiel. We all know John Nichol, who I, like to, I hope to have music, his music here, too. We all know uh, One Hand Dan. Uh, but we also want to make certain that there are people out there who have... Uh, get the kind of exposure that they, they, they uh, it's, it's tough to get. In a, in a sea of things that we can consume on the internet, it's tough to, to break through sometimes, uh, break through the noise. And it I, is. And so it, to, to share some of that here, uh, another a fellow member of the community is, is a joy for all of us. Absolutely. Cool. Uh, Warren Graham just asked where he can get the album. Nick, if you can paste that link in there. We've got a link to uh, Eric's Google Play mm -hmm list where you can buy the tracks for I believe 99 cents a piece or some such or the whole album. Sorry, He's mine. also got it on iTunes, uh, Amazon, so it, it's around. We got one link for you here and you can uh, take it from there. Looks like the link just got posted, there. so that's good stuff. So next it's uh, the how-to segment. You know, we always like to give you a little something. Now this one's kind of specific. This one involves pickup rings, putting pickup rings on a mini humbucker pickup. The ones we sell as snake oil uh, mini humbuckers here. We cut wooden rings for them on the laser machine and then it makes them look nice. So here's an example 
of a guitar that has these pickup rings. So what we're going to be showing you here is how to change pickup rings on a finished cigar box guitar without having to open it up. We had a customer inquire about this. He bought one of these very guitars here, cigar box guitars, and he wanted to replace the rings on them because um, I think uh, in, in shipping there was some damage, so he needed to replace them. He's like, how hard is it? And we said, uh, we're not sure. <laughs> so, so I asked Glenn, like, can you do it from outside the box? So he tried it. He's like, yeah, you can. It's not that hard. And uh, so we made a video to send to the customer along uh, with replacement rings. And we wanted to share that video with you here today. Uh, now, Glenn, you designed this guitar, so you knew what was going on mm. pretty much inside and all around. But this video that you're about to see, narrated also by Glenn, will show you how to take one of these and replace the pickup rings. To replace the pickup ring, remove the screws that fasten it to the box, and then remove the pickup mounting screws to unfasten the pickup from the pickup ring. Do this a little at a time, switching side to side, so that you can take out or remove the pickup evenly. And then once you're removing the pickup from the ring, be mindful of where the springs go. You don't want to lose them inside the box. And take your new ring, insert the pickup mounting screws through it. And then over those screws, place those adjustment springs. And this next part gets a little tricky, but align those pickup mounting screws with the tabs on the pickup and then a little at a time so as to do it evenly twist those mounting screws to fasten the pickup to the ring and when you're done you can put that ring back in the box and use those screws to fasten that entire assembly back to your guitar. All right, welcome back everybody. Hope you enjoyed that short video showing you how to change those pickup rings. It turns out it's easier than even we thought it would be. <laughs> uh, now I want to talk a little bit. I know I've been doing a lot of talking already, but we send out a newsletter every week uh, for CB Giddy. We also send one out, a separate one out for Cigar Box Nation. And I always try to write a little introduction to those newsletters every week. And on a recent one, I kind of got uh, inspired a little bit to talk about how much it, it means and how inspiring it is for me and for us and everybody on the Giddy Team uh, when you share what you've done. So the, the idea here is that inspiration is a two-way street. It's not just us trying to inspire you. We're inspired by you. And why it means so much to me personally, uh, running this business, when you do share those things. So for me, coming up with new stuff, uh, uh, new products, new kits, that's my favorite part of the whole thing, of CB Giddy uh, in general. It, taking an idea from, from the ground up, from scratch, and creating a new thing, whether it's a, or at least reimagining a thing into a new form creating it, uh, producing it, putting it on the market, on the CB Giddy website, and then holding your breath, really. Is anybody going to like it? Is it going to sell? Is it going to be a success? And then we do that, and then you, people like you, our customers fork over their hard-earned money and buy these things and, and use them to create musical instruments. And for me, that, it, it's, it's very, I don't want to say gratifying, it, 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 it's, it, it gives me pride to be a part of that, to, to be able to create those things. So when you then share photos, videos, and sto the stories behind the instruments that you create using our parts, that, that really re-inspires us re-inspires me, re-inspires us to, to keep doing it and to push forward um, the satisfaction and pride of being part of this homemade instrument movement is really 
Uh, there's nothing like it to, to see the faces of, of students, of kids who build their own guitar for the first time and say things like, I've never made anything out of wood. I've never created my own thing and now I've got this guitar or this canjo that I can take home and be proud of. I mean, that's, that's powerful stuff right there. So seeing those kinds of photos or seeing when, when one of you takes, say, like our 2x4 lap steel kit, recently a, a person took that and painted a, a, a reimagination of the famous painting, the scream, mm. you know, the guy on the, the, the bridge, painted that on the 2x4 and made that into a lap steel guitar. I'll tell you what, for me, that's, that's right near the top. That's, that's about as good as it gets of being a part of all of this. And it reaffirms for me why I'm involved in this, why I've put so much time into this over the years. You know, the idea, spreading the idea that anyone, anywhere can build their own instrument, make music on it, and create art, as Glenn likes to say, create art that makes more art. That is what keeps me going. And I appreciate it. Thank you for sharing what you build and what you do, because it makes what we do all that more uh, worth doing. So, thank you. What do we got next? I got a little boogie mode. Back to boogie? Yeah. Ah, all right. Yeah, it is. Uh, <laughs> we got to review and recap Let's first, do don't we? All right, so this show, we're now getting towards the end of it. Uh, we want to thank everyone again. Matthew Simpson, his uh, T-shirt hat, where he took one of our T-shirts and added uh, his Magic Daddy to the back there. That's great stuff. Uh, Scott Morrison asking, will a paper cigar box be strong enough for a neck over CBG? Yes. Uh, cardboard, depends on what you mean by that. Uh, cardboard versus hardboard or MDF, but the, the simple answer is yes, almost always. Give it a try and see how it works. If you don't like it, put a different box on there. Huh? All right, so we showed you how to read and play some tablature. We did what else? We uh, battled him with the Republic. We featured Zeke Leonard and the work he's doing to, in the homemade instrument world. Good stuff. We uh, covered a support letter, a, a, a question about our canjo necks and talked about how to use those. Uh, took a look and listened to Eric Denton's new music, a song at the bottom, good stuff there. Showed you how to change a pickup ring on a cigar box guitar without opening the box. And finally I rambled on about inspiration, and here we are at the sign-off. <laughs> to win one of these new books by Brent Robitaille. We'll be choosing from people who commented on or shared this video either while we were live or throughout the rest of today. So thank you again for watching. That's all we've got for you. The Giddy Guys Show, Cigar Box Nation TV. Thanks, Nick, for running and producing all of this. And we're out.